I've had a few questions about the hardware behind my slider build. So for this video, I've taken it all apart and I'm going to take you through as I put it back together. We're going to start on what I call the non-drive side, or the side of the slider that's opposite of the motor. The first piece of the puzzle is a custom-made L-bracket that I made from an aluminum flat from the hardware store. I bent it over my table at 90 degrees and drilled two holes. The smaller of the two holes is for the pulley, and the larger of the two is what mounts it all to the end cap of the slider. As you can see from both my holes, drilling them in the center is recommended, but definitely not required. Next in line is the screw that forms the backbone of our pulley. Next is the pulley itself. I bought a pair of these on Amazon. You'll notice I've removed the two set screws that would normally hold it in place. This is because we want it to spin freely. After that are a few washers matched to the diameter of the screw. I've used these to help space things out and put everything exactly where it should be. Finally, I've got two nuts. I used locking nuts just to help keep everything in place. All right, let's start putting it all together. We'll start with the screw. We'll put the first washer on our screw to form the top of everything and then stick on our timing pulley. That'll be followed by the rest of our three washers. You may need to vary the number of washers depending on your design to get the spacing right. As for why there are two nuts, if we just mounted it to the L bracket like this and tightened it down, the pulley wouldn't be able to spin freely. To get around that, we'll mount this first washer as an anchor point for the second. We'll save us a little time here. It's important that this first washer not be tight against the rest of the stack and that the pulley be able to spin freely. Next, we'll mount it onto our L bracket. We'll tighten the two nuts down towards each other, sandwiching the L bracket in between and leaving the pulley at the top to spin freely. And that's the first piece I'll put together. Next, we'll look at where the belt mounts to the carriage. We'll start again with another custom L bracket. This one though is just a modified store-bought bracket. Since the one side was too long, I started by cutting it off and remaking the hole just outside the bend. On the other side, I still added a second hole, but I left it at full length. Since this will go on the underside of the carriage, I wanted the extra length for a little extra stability. The shorter side is what mounts to the belt, so it only needs to be as tall as that. For the belt, I bought a length that was too long and cut it down so it was a little bit shorter than I wanted. That way, when I stitched it together, it made a little loop in the middle that I could mount to the L bracket. To bring the two together, I put a one centimeter screw first through the L bracket and then through the loop that was formed when I joined the belt. Next on is a washer to add a little extra surface area to grip the belt. Last on is another locking nut to keep it all together. Through the other leg of the bracket, we'll use a bolt to hold it all to the underside of the carriage. And now onto the motor. To hold the motor to the slider, I started with a store-bought bracket that was matched to the size of my motor. When the bracket first came, there were little tabs in both the corners to help add stability and strength, but I ripped those out to make everything fit together a little nicer. Next, I added a hole of my own to run a bolt through. And as you can see, putting things in not quite the center just seems to be something I do. We're almost ready to start mounting things, but first I want to take a look at the end cap of the slider. It came with two holes on either side that are threaded for a quarter inch and five eighths inch, respectively. Normally, they'd be used to mount it to a tripod, but in this case, I'm using the five eighths inch thread to mount the pulley. All right, it's time to actually start putting the pieces together. As you can see, there are a lot of holes on this slider and it was one of the main selling points when I bought it. It makes mounting things like this really easy. It's worth mentioning that I did a test fit of everything before I actually cut down the belt. With the motor and pulley in place, I ran it over the path that it would take and added an extra half inch before I made the first cut just to be safe. Then as everything started to take shape, I trimmed it down an eighth of an inch at a time just to make sure I could get it to the perfect length. All right, let's get back to it. We'll grab the belt and its mounting bracket and bolt it to the underside of the carriage. I did use a wrench to tighten everything down after this just to make sure it would stay in place. Next, we'll mount the non-drive side using a split locking washer, a bolt, and a regular washer. 
again tightening everything down just to keep it in place. Then we'll mount the motor using the same bolt, locking washer, washer combo. You'll notice I haven't mounted the pulley to the motor shaft yet, and this is with good reason. Timing belts don't stretch, so with the pulley in place, I can't get the belt sufficiently around the far side of the pulley. To get around this, I wrap the belt around the pulley first, and then mount it onto the motor. Then to help everything line up correctly, I bring the pulley towards the tip of the shaft before tightening it down. And that's it. All you need now is an Arduino and a little bit of code, and you've got yourself your own home-built motorized camera slider.